In a previous video, I talked about the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And the Black-Scholes model prices a European call option. Now, a call option is an option that gives the holder of the option the right to buy, but not the obligation to buy the stock at the specified price known as the exercise price. And a European style option is one that can only be exercised on the expiration date. Now, what's neat about the Black-Scholes model is that all but one variable are observable. The stock price, you can just look up a quote in the paper. The exercise price X, you can just look up, uh, it's part of the contract. So you can pick the uh, option with the spe specific exercise price you're interested in and value that. This here, E to the RT, is a continuous time present value factor with R being the risk-free interest rate and T being the time until the option expires and that should be annualized. So that should be a fraction of a year so for 180 days it would be about 0.5. Um, D1 is calculated here and it's just the natural log of S divided by X, stock price divided by the exercise price, plus the risk-free rate plus sigma squared the variance of the stock's returns divided by two, okay, and this should be annualized as well, times the time until it expires, okay, and that's all divided by the variance times the time until the option expires, and then you take the square root of that. And then D2 is D1 minus uh, actually what's in the denominator here, sigma squared T uh, square root. Um, the ND is just a statistical function. It's the probability that a standardized normally distributed random variable will be less than or equal to D. And you can just look it up in a table or you can use Excel. Excel has functions that calculate that. And I also have the put call parity down here but we really won't talk about that right here. In this uh, panel over here I've created a spreadsheet that values the call option. It's really quite easy to do. You can, you can uh, find calculators on the internet. There are computer programs that calculate the Black-Scholes model. But if you don't happen to have one, you can simply uh, create a spreadsheet to compute this. And these are the variables we're interested in. Stock price, exercise price, risk-free rate, time to expiration, and the variance of the stock's returns. So I put in information, and this is the same information from the previous uh, example I did when I did the Black-Scholes option pricing model. And I've broken down the formula. I could have just made one long formula to calculate it, but it's much easier if you're trying to do it to break it into parts. So I have natural log of S over X right here, um, the R plus sigma squared divided by 2 times T right here. It's easier to do it this way because if you make a mistake and you have a long equation, you have this whole thing in here, it's hard to find where you made the mistake. It's easier to work it out like this. Okay, this, this calculates D1, so you can just see we have some formulas up here. Okay, Natural log of S divided by X is the natural log of B3 divided by B4, and you can look at all of these. The uh, risk-free rate is in cell B5 plus the variance, which is in B7, divided by 2, okay, times T, which is in B6, um, etc. So you can see all of these formulas here. I'll just scroll down so you can look up top, just if you're interested in seeing how I put the formulas in. Okay, to calculate D1, it's just going to be B9 plus B10 divided by B11. That's what the formula is here. And D2 is just going to be D1, which is in cell B2, I'm sorry, B12, minus what's in cell B11. And then ND1 uses this normal standard distribution function, okay? And you can, you can get it by um, clicking the drop-down menu, or you can just type equals norm s dist, and then put uh, D1 in there, and the same with D2. And then I've calculated the, uh, the price of the call option using this formula. Okay, B3 times B14, stock price times uh, ND1, 
minus the present value of this exercise price times B15 or ND2, and we get 420. So what I'm interested in talking about in this tutorial is how do you get the variance? Well, there are a couple of ways you can do it. One is you can calculate historical variance. So you can get stock return data for five years or 10 years and calculate variance the way you normally calculate variance. The problem with that is that past history or past uh, stock return information may not be reflective of the volatility that we see in the market today. So another method for solving is referred to as implied volatility or implied variance. And what it is is it's the variance here that's implied by this model. So what we assume is is that the price of the stock is correct in the newspaper, that the market is trading it at the correct price, and we keep changing the variance until this model gives us the price that's you know quoted in the market. So let's say for argument's sake that the price in the market is three dollars and fifty cents. Okay, what does that imply about the variance? Well, higher variance leads to a higher stock price, so we need to try a lower variance here. Let's try nine percent. Okay, what do we get? We get three dollars and ninety-two cents. So that's still a little too high. Let's try. Let's try eight percent. 363 still too high okay but getting closer to 350 seven uh, percent okay too low so we keep we can keep trying things seven and seven and a half percent seven and a half is pretty close okay this just rounded off here so let me uh, try and format this let's see let me see if I can add a couple of decimal places okay so seven and a half percent. Let's see what we have here. We have, let's try 7.75. So if anybody remembers the old TV show, The Price is Right, where you used to guess higher and lower, this is one way to do it. And uh, there, there are other ways you can do it. Let's try 7.6%. 6 That's pretty close. A little less than 7.6, so maybe 7.59, 7.58. Now there are computer programs that actually do this for you, but this is a nice way to sort of understand how this works. I mean, sometimes when you punch something into a computer program, it seems like magic. And it's not magic. So if the, if the call option price were 350, the market basically says that the variance is 7.58%. Okay, uh, let's try a Let's try a, a higher one. Let's try, I don't know, four, oh, five dollars and twenty-five cents. Say the, say the um, call option price were five twenty-five. We'd need a higher variance. Before we had ten. Let's try twelve. Okay, that gives us four seventy-one. Too low. So let's try fifteen percent. Okay, that's a little too high. Thirteen uh, percent. Too low, 14%. So someplace between 14 and 15%, 14.5%. Okay, a little too high, 14.4%. So a little too high, maybe 14.35%. So a little high, 14.33. Uh, let's say not, not enough. 14.32. Three two, okay. So about fourteen point three two percent. Now again, there are pro programs that do this for you, much more efficient. There are there are more efficient ways to do this in Excel, where it does the the uh, searching and the guessing for you. But it's kind of nice to do it yourself because you can kind of see how different variances imply different prices from the Black Scholes model. And again, the idea of implied volatility is that we can figure out what the market thinks the variance is based on the price that's uh, that the option is trading for in the marketplace. And that can be useful information. Higher, 
Higher volatility means the option price should go up. Lower volatility means the option price can go down. And we can use this volatility because this is a current volatility. This is what the market thinks um, the stock returns variance is right now, not what it was five years ago or 10 years ago or two years ago for that matter. So this is one way to calculate variance. We assume that the Black-Scholes model is correct and we look at the price in the newspaper or online to see what the option is trading for and then we find the variance that makes the Black-Scholes price equal to the price the option is trading for in the marketplace.